to welcome back uh, top PGA Tour coach Eric Kaplan here. And I'm joined by Allison TG, uh, who's been one of my friends and mentors in terms of understanding the actual fundamentals of the golf swing and how anyone should be applying them. And so what we're going to be talking about today, because we've already gone through the primary tilt and secondary tilt, as well as the rotation of the scapular glide and the takeaway, is a pressure shift. And so one of the things that you know people talk about a lot, ground reaction force, et cetera, all these buzzwords that are nothing more than optical illusions from what we're able to understand, is what we want the, the pressure shift to look like over the course of a downswing as well as backswing. Mm -hmm. And so, and again, there might be some instances by which you would not want to pressure shift. And so one of the things that we like to talk about in terms of optimal way to deliver energy from the body through the club to the ball is the understanding that we do want to, in many instances, shift our pressure, shift our weight from right leg to left leg. Yeah. So how we do that is important to understand. And again, what we want to be doing with the pelvis is also important. And so what I'd take a look for is, first of all, if I were to stand up in neutral, if I were to just pull my scapula back around my spine, I'm not going to feel a substantial amount of pressure shifting from one foot to the other. Okay. However, <clears throat> it will, yeah, it does not create, rotation does not create weight shift or pressure shift. It doesn't. However, there might be an influencing factor in that, whereby if I have a slight secondary tilt or translation, if you were to imagine the leaning tower of Pisa, this tower eventually is going to fall in a certain direction, being this one. So by creating a little bit of secondary tilt, what we see is most people have an easier time learning how to get the lower body engaged in terms of getting that pressure shift more into that right heel as a result of the secondary tilt. And so for me, you know, what we take a look at is the position of the right hip. We actually want to keep this position relatively constant, and that would require a slight lateral move of the pelvis because, again, if my hips are an oval, if I just rotate, there's the optical illusion of the hip coming off the line. Whereby what we're looking for is when I create that secondary tilt, I've already kind of reset the hip, the hip forward. So as I rotate, I certainly would want to see a little bit of a lateral motion into that right glute as a way to keep that hip right on the line. So, again, this is what I would consider to be what I'm looking for out of most of my tour players. But, Alice, I'd love to get some insight regarding there might be some instances, whether it's somebody with hip replacement surgery, et cetera, where that might not be optimal or ideal. So, again, let's... And, let's... and for, for all athletic motion... Yes. The only sport that has ever said not to shift... All weight shift is lateral. Yes. Rotational motion is rotational motion. A shift or a pressure shift that requires lateral move, whether it's one inch, a half an inch, and a quarter. There is no shifting of the weight unless you take your body mass and you move it to the right leg or the left leg. Like we talked about walking, walking naturally, there's a natural shifting because you've got your weight all on one leg. Like if you stand on one foot, all your weight in the in the hip, every your torso will stack up on that leg. And that's kind of what happens as we walk, but all sports shift 100% right, 100% left. Yes. Every one of them. Find me one sport where they say, oh, no, I want 50-50. Yeah. Now, the reason, the only reason that can be accommodated in golf, golf is also the only sport where they make a 90-degree shoulder turn. Like, so if you think about uh, hockey makes 90 degrees. Yeah. But a lot of hockey players, there's only a 45-degree shoulder turn a lot of times and the arms kind of cross over the body, sorry, with a, with a hockey stick. But you're, the golf is the only sport that requires somebody to make, on average, a 135-degree rotation to the left. So when you shift left and that pelvis has to turn 135 degrees. So one of the reasons we see in golf that you can – not go with 100% transfer or start kind of messing with that, picking and choosing, stack and tilt. They want somebody on the left leg. I mm -hmm. don't want to teach that to anybody. Unless, first. yeah. Because of the spine, right? Yeah. It, that would be my reasoning. But that doesn't mean that if somebody really likes it and they insist that I wouldn't work with it, the most important thing is that student needs to know how to sense and feel what is 50-50 without the little measuring plate things. Yeah, the course plate. Like where they stand on and measure it. I, I was down at Ledbetter. I stood on one foot. Yeah. Yeah. I had 18% of my weight. I wasn't even standing on. <laughs> yeah. So we, so a golfer can't take those plate mate measuring things with them to say, tell them on the course where the weight is. So with body mechanics, you can learn how to sense and feel the weight shift and how to make those little micro moves um, to get from right to left. For sure. And 
so in what instance would somebody not necessarily want to shift their weight in that way? I'm pretty much a, 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 a sports, uh, what would you call it? I like to go with the historical right left. I am a okay. right left all the way across the board. I don't like the 50 50, but it works so well for people that don't have hip problems. If they don't have back pain, then and they want to stay centered um, and not shift from right to left and let that and let the pelvis rotate. Um, you know, as long as there aren't any injuries, you know, and the older a person is, I'm going to say, because it takes longer for the brain to shoot the message to the body to get them uh -huh. to move correctly, that's also when, it, because you probably know elderly golfers, they stop using the weight shift in the lower body and they kind of just do this with their upper body to swing. Uh -huh. So that would be another case where I'd really teach them to full shift to the right, full shift to the left. I mean, 100% posting up right and posting up left. Just, with to, create a little bit more. just, just to create a little bit more power. Help. Yeah, 100%. So when you're talking, if there's none of that, um, you know, the only other reason that weight shift is good is because once you post up on one leg and the hip socket is in its neutral position, in its optimal position for hip rotation. For sure. So if you're going to use hip rotation, and again, elderly people, I would love for them to make 40, half of their back swing can be made from that ball and socket inside the hip. That yes. totally saves their back. And I've got to show you a picture of this because this is so helpful to and go that's where if for somebody who, look at it. And that's where for somebody who does not shift, you know, it would inhibit their ability for their lower body to, to rotate even in the backswing as well. Exactly. So you yes. see this hip socket here? Yes. That's a ball and socket. So yes. you can be rotating that and not rotating the spine. Yes. It's going to be in its optimal position to rotate if you stack that leg, you bring it all the way over here and stack it in neutral where you would be ankle hip. So that's where I would do that. If I want to tap in and use this hip socket in order to get their back to the target. And I would say almost every senior, I just default to that automatically just Pretty because, good. you know, I probably have more hours invested training golfers than anybody else in the country, if not the world. I'm be way beyond 40,000. So I do, I will make some generalities to that, that that's a safe place. But again, it's not an absolute. It could be either way. You working with the younger tour pros and stuff. So you're going to be making some different decisions and you'll be able to allow a lot more flexibility in that. Sure. And, 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 we, and we call them windows of tolerance. Some people, they like to load deeper into the glute. You know, they feel more powerful from there. But again, for a senior player, that might not be the, the, the approach to take for a guy like Miguel. You know, he has a lot more lower body rotation in his backswing than even, even than Bernhardt does based upon their conditioning as well as a whole. Um, so that sounds great. I'm really looking forward to diving deeper into pressure shift with you. Um, yeah. But again, you know, it's, it's important to understand that these are fundamentals of movement that we talk about. Again, there's variations of normal based upon player's age, ability, injury, et cetera. But to understand these fundamentals mean we learn how to tweak them based on what is optimal, most importantly for each student one, one at a time. Yes. That's what we're yeah. going to dive into. Very true. So, Allison, thanks so much for being here to talk about pressure shift. What we're going to talk about next is the completion of the backswing, the understanding of elevation or shoulder elevation, as well as trail arm flexion with external rotation. So those are the next, those are the next two pieces of the backswing. And again, let's dive deeper. Sounds good.